guys, welcome back. So it is officially fall, which means here in the Midwest, the temperatures are dropping and the leaves on the trees are finally just starting to change colors. This is the time of year when you can often find me and my kids curled up on the couch reading fall themed picture books. If you're new around here, my name is Sarah and I am the homeschool mom of five children and they are ages 13, 11, seven, two and a half and a one year old baby. One of the things that I love to do in our home is to fill different themed book baskets and to stash them in different corners of our house. Oftentimes I will pair this along what we are studying in school. For instance, right now we are doing a unit study about oceans. So you will find a book basket in our schoolroom that is full of books about marine animals and sea creatures, ocean life, that sort of thing. In history, we are also studying US government. So I have another book basket in our schoolroom that is full of books about our presidents, founding fathers, the constitution, all things related to US government. One of the favorite baskets that I like to fill in our home is right here in our living room and it is just a seasonal picture book basket that I change out every few weeks or about once a month or so and I will fill this basket with books that relate to the season or the closest holiday that we will be celebrating and I try to select around 10 or 15 books that my older kids who are in middle school will enjoy as well as a few board books that my toddler and my baby will like looking through as well. So go grab some coffee, tea, maybe a pumpkin latte, put it in your favorite fall coffee mug, and let's just sit down and flip through all of the books that I have in our fall book basket. First up, we have Oxcart Man. Now, this is a great book to read any time of year, but because the first pages talk about the month of October, this is one that we really love to stick in our fall book basket because it has to do with harvest time. This book is a family favorite. It is a Caldecott medal winner, and it follows along a New England farmer as he packs his cart with goods that his family has prepared all year long. This book teaches seasons, farm life, work ethic. It is a book that my kids just love reading every single year over and over and over again. Next up is the book, Fall is Here, I Love It. This is actually the first year that we have had this book in our book basket. This book is actually part of a seasonal series done by the author and the illustrator. They have other books for summer, spring, winter. So I'm really excited to have this as our first one to read in the series. It tells a story told from a young child's perspective as he is helping out on his family farm in the fall and just goes through all of the traditions and things that he does to help his parents during harvest time. There is information and illustration about farm animals, goats, pigs, pheasants, and also fall crops, apples, and pumpkins. The watercolor illustrations in this book are absolutely captivating, and I think this is going to be a keeper, one we will probably put in our basket every single year for now on. Next, we have the pretty popular book, Countdown to Fall. If you have never read this book, it counts backwards from 10 to one as your children will learn about different types of leaves. Each time you turn the page, you're going to discover a new number, a new animal, and a fall leaf. At the end of the book, there are actually these additional educational sections that have teaching activities, quizzes, and additional resources to go along with the book. And this is what makes it such a great picture book if you are reading to children of varying ages. My middle schoolers love this book because they really enjoy figuring out the different leaf identifications, while my toddler just likes counting backwards from 10 to one. Next one is a newer book. It's only been on the market for a year or two. This is the first year we have actually picked it up. It is called The Scarecrow. It has a rhyming poetry-like text and it tells the story of a surprising friendship between a beautiful scarecrow 
and a crow. As you read, you travel through all of the seasons and many emotions as you learn about kindness, loyalty, and friendship. Honestly, this is probably my favorite book that we have in our basket this year. It just, the story is beautiful, the illustrations are great, and I, I just really love this book. The next book is Hiking Day. Now, we are huge fans of Anne Rockwell in our house. She is one of our all-time favorite authors. One of her other books at the supermarket is actually Ezra's current favorite board book. We read it multiple times every single day. So when I saw Hiking Day on the shelf at the library, it was a no-brainer. I just had to pick it up. This is a story about a young girl going on her very first hiking adventure with her family. And I think that Anne Rockwell's stories are so fascinating for young kids because she details the ordinary. In this book, she talks about what the little girl puts on to wear and how long the car drive takes to get to the hiking trail. She talks about stopping to look at the trail map. Just taking the time to really hone in on those little details that mean so much to young children is one of the reasons why I think Ezra and all of my kids have really enjoyed Anne Rockwell's books. While we're talking about Anne Rockwell, another one that is pretty popular these days is Apples and Pumpkins. This is another one of our family favorites. It's been in our book basket for several years now, and it tells the story of a little girl and her family as they visit the Comstock farm and go apple and pumpkin picking. Afterward, they head home to carve a jack-o'-lantern and to pass out their apples for trick-or-treat night. Next, we have Hocus Pocus, It's Fall, and this is one that my younger kids love. As you turn every page, you will say the magic words and reveal beautiful illustrations that are full of details and bright, vibrant colors. This next book is one that I originally heard about from Sarah McKenzie and the Read Aloud Revival. It is Bear Has a Story to Tell. Almost winter and Bear was getting sleepy, but first Bear had a story to tell. This book has gorgeous minimal illustrations that have a simple and slow paced story to go along with them. And you can read this book over and over again with your kids because the end of the book leads you right back to the beginning. Beginning. It is a little bit circular in its storytelling, which is just so fun and so unique. Next up, we have One More Acorn, and this is a book actually by Don Freeman, the author of Corduroy. This is a story about a squirrel named Earl who is collecting acorns in Washington, D.C. As you flip through the pages, you will see different monuments and locations in Washington, D.C. portrayed in the backgrounds. And it is just such a touching story. It does a wonderful job of really sparking that feeling of fall and election season. And in the back of the book, I would encourage you to read the story about how this book came to be. Don Freeman was actually in Washington, D.C. during the Senate hearings of the Civil Rights Bill where he got the idea to make this book. Don Freeman was so sad and upset after the assassination of John F. Kennedy that he put the book away and decided not to create it. And after he died, his son, Roy Freeman, found his sketches and his notes about the book and decided to go ahead and create it. This is one of my absolute favorite picture books of all time. While we are on the squirrel vein, we also have The Busy Little Squirrel by Nancy Tafuri, and this book is just so fun for young children. You follow along with a very busy squirrel as he is collecting acorns and food for the winter, and other animals want him to play and do things with them, but he can't because he is too busy. My little ones love reading this book and making the different animal sounds as they read meow for a cat, wolf for a dog. It is just really fun, especially if you have toddlers or preschoolers in the house. Next, we have Pumpkin Pumpkin, which is another one that I found thanks to the Read Aloud Revival. This book has the most gorgeous, what I think are colored pencil illustrations in it. And you follow along with a little boy, Jamie, as he plants a pumpkin seed in the spring and then spends time throughout the seasons 
watching it grow and grow until it's finally this huge pumpkin, perfect for making a jack-o'-lantern. This next one is an oldie but a goodie. If you have babies or toddlers in the house, I'm sure that you already love Duck and Goose books. This is Duck and Goose Find a Pumpkin. We have read this book for years and years in our house. All of my kids have really enjoyed it during those toddler and baby years. You follow along with Duck and Goose as they are searching for a pumpkin in the fall and, and they're searching in all of the wrong places. And if you like these board books, there are dozens of Duck and Goose books that go along with just about every season and every holiday that you can think of. Next up we have the book Pumpkin Moonshine by Tasha Tudor and this book is just so fun. It is about a little girl named Sylvie Ann she is looking for the biggest, fattest pumpkin that she can find in the pumpkin patch. She wants to make a pumpkin moonshine or a jack-o'-lantern. And you're following along with her as she is trying to get this huge pumpkin home. And of course, it gets away from her and rolls and frightens farm animals and even knocks someone over in the process. It is just such a classic fall board book that I'm sure you will love and enjoy as much as our family does. Last on my list is a picture book and poetry book combined. It is huge. It's really heavy. It is Sing a Song of Seasons, a nature poem for each day of the year. And it has 365 poems in it that are very seasonal, having to do with nature. This is a great book for your seasonal book basket, just to read all year long. Each day you can read a poem. It will only take you, I mean, less than a minute, and they are just beautiful poems that go along with the season. I actually heard about this book from another homeschool mom and I, I checked it out from our local library. We have enjoyed it so much that I'm definitely going to have to purchase this one. Today's poem says, Under the greenwood tree who loves to lie with me and turn his merry note unto the sweet bird's throat. Come hither, come hither, come hither. Here shall he see no enemy but winter and rough weather and this is by William Shakespeare as you like it okay guys well I think that that wraps things up for today I hope that you enjoyed going through our fall book basket with me these will be the books that are in the basket for the next few weeks or so in October and then I will be changing them out to an apple theme as our family will be going apple picking this month and then it will be changing into Thanksgiving themes and so I will make sure to go ahead and post videos as I am changing out those books just to give you guys some ideas and inspiration for picture books that you could be reading at home with your kids so if you haven't done so already please subscribe to my channel hit that red subscribe button below. I have so many fun fall videos planned for the next few weeks. I'm going to do a soup week and share some of our favorite soup recipes with you guys. I'm going to do what's in my nature backpack as part of my nature's journaling series where I share all of my favorite nature journaling supplies with you. And of course, gather round updates galore. Those are always on my to-do list. So there will be more gather round homeschool videos as well. And while you're at it, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and like it below and leave me a comment. Tell me what your favorite fall picture book is. I would really love to hear. I'm always on the hunt for new books for our seasonal book baskets. I hope that you are enjoying this fall season with your family. See you later.